Hello, everyone. Thank you so <laughs> much for joining us for another Ultimate Creative Chat. We just had a photo bomb, which was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else wanted to get in on the interview. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe next time. To say hi to me. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But that's yeah. okay. So we have Chibi Lewis Okoye with us today and she is a filmmaker so that's a first for us we've got a filmmaker on she has <laughs> she has made an incredible film called Kofa and it is a psychological thriller that you may be able to check out very soon um, at theaters near you so I'm gonna let Chibi tell you all about that but we're also just gonna talk about um, the actual uh, fact of having black women and and more females behind the scenes in the movie industry and in the film industry. So thank you, Chibi, for being here with me. Thank you for having me, Danielle. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit, first of all, about your background in the film industry. Um, how long have you been at it? And what was your um, sort of rise or your your um, path to where you are now. All right. So thanks a lot for that. Um, so I started when I left university so many years ago. Um, and the way I started was I met a duo and they were working on a film as an immigrant story. And a friend of mine said they needed um, someone to do a soundtrack because my previous background, I was actually a singer. I used to do some um, personal and uh, I used to do private events. I used to write and all that kind of stuff. Nice. So I did some recording. And after I did the recording, because um, I actually did took some film uh, courses at university and had done a short student film, um, it just became a natural progression. I started working with them and I became the associate producer on this film. It's called Tenant. And then um, after that, it was basically a hiatus. I, like I said, I went in, I did some music, but I also worked in theater. And while I all did all these jobs, um, I had a full time. I used to work, have a day job because, you know, the entertainment space is pretty interesting and volatile in some ways. So I kept a full time job and I continued doing all of my creative passions. Um, it was not until um, some years ago, like in towards the end of 2016, that um, the writer that is, yeah, came to Calgary, where I was living at the time, Calgary, Alberta is in the west of Canada and he was writing this um, film. And so I got on board on it as uh, an executive producer and a producer and we started working on it. So Kofa has kind of been, like the writing process has kind of taken a while and then we started working on it. So um, it was shot in Nigeria um, and you know, I had to leave at some point to come back to Canada and raise some more funds because as a producer, that's um, on the business side and also a producer, you are creative, hopefully. Um, I had to, you know, really look for funding for the film, and so did he. So I came back to Canada, try to look for funding and do, doing other connections, connectivity kind of work, and doing a producing kind of work, trying to get distribution for it and things like that. So um, that's kind of been my journey. And then last year was when I actually decided, and again, like I said, when I was trying to raise funds, after a while, I went back, got a full-time job, because I work in tech. Like, I have a tech background. I work in the tech industry. Okay. So I'm also a Black woman tech. <laughs> so I work in products. Um, and then it was not until last year I made a decision to join a producer's residency to actually take the stay on the career path as my priority. Um, and I've, after that, I had done I've done about I've done about three producer programs now. In fact, today I'm at Black Women Film Canada. This is the office space in Toronto, and we just had our final pitches and uh, this is our final session for the program. And those are the people you saw photo bombing me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to share the love. I know. Spread the love. 
there were periods when everyone's so happy. You know, we got rosies and everything. We've had like drinks and cake and it's just been lovely. So we've been sharing ideas. I've been working on a new project and the whole process of this residency was really to fine tune the project. And mine is a TV series and I don't want to go into the pitch um, right now because, you know, that's another question, <laughs> but I'll talk about it later, hopefully. And my goal right now um, is you know, fit doing these producer residency to really understand the Canadian landscape of producing and the international landscape of co-productions and things like that. So that has been my journey into producing. It's never, it's, there's really no one way for any one particular uh, career path in producing. Um, this is just where I found myself and my life. And this is how I was able to make the best of a career and hopefully hmm. go from strength to strength um, as a producer. Oh, that is very interesting. We'll be right back. Do you own a growing business? Danielle Rosser's clients get the keys to success when it comes to meeting their bottom line. Reach your intended audience with the proper branding, messaging, and storytelling when you partner with Ultimate Creative. So what can Ultimate Creative do for you? Click the link in the description for a consultation and let's get started. Back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know anything about the film industry and how to actually um, jump in there, that is some good information for you to uh, jot down and do some research on what it might take for you to get into that industry. Um, yes. Of course, Chibi is in Canada. A lot of our viewers are in um, on the North American continent. Yes. And so they're, we're all spread out all over the place. But um, it's so great to have that perspective from one place to another. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, let's talk about Kofa just a little bit. Sure. It is, like I said, a psychological thriller. And um, it talks about some interesting themes and some real life um, themes that we deal with in everyday life, some more than others. Yes. So feel free to talk about that for a minute. Sure, and the sure. success <laughs> that, that Kofa is having. <laughs> okay. So uh, thanks for that. So Kofa is a psychological thriller. It's um, basically, it's set in Nigeria. It's with eight people who are in a room. Um, they wake up with no memories. They're in their underwear, you know, basically no clothes on, no phones. Um, they don't know why they're in this room and why they're panicking. Um, a man starts coming into this room and taking them out one after the other. And every time he comes back to the room, he's bloodied. So they're panicking more, they're frantic, and then there's chaos in the room because they're trying to understand how did we get in here? What is this man's mission? Why does he keep coming into this room and taking us? What is he doing with the other others that he's taking out? Mm -hmm. um, how do we piece together our memories? Perhaps if we did it successfully, we could figure out how we got in here and how to get out or how to get rid of this man or how to basically freedom. So, you know, people that are trapped in a place and trying to get out, so there's a lot of the whole, you know, betrayals and finger pointing and just chaos. And it's a race against time because there is at, at, at certain intervals, this man keeps coming into the room. Um, it's not mm. until all of them have been taken out of the room that it is then disclosed to the viewers what really happened and why they were in the room in the first place and what is the mission of this man who kept coming into the room to take them. So it takes a completely different twist. It takes a completely different turn. And you know, Nigeria as a country, we have certain, there are a lot of great things about it, but we also have certain challenges and themes around kidnappings. And then, you know, this deals with those subject matter and what does it mean for those that are traumatized in that position? And what is the mission of some of these kidnappers? And in their particular case, what does it look like? It, and what's that full blown mission? It's when you get out of the room in further acts of the film, 
that we actually start to disclose and it is such a mind-blowing twist and wow. that's really what makes the film so um like you said kofa <laughs> has been successful in africa on the continent and even outside um, we were nominated for um the recently concluded african magic viewers choice award one of our actor um, the lead. Um, his name is Daniel Etim F. Young, a great uh, actor from Nigeria, doing great things. And Excellent. he's nominated for Best Actor. And then a, a young lady, Jenna Castell um, from Ghana, Nigeria. She was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at last year's uh, concluded African International Film Festival, we won the Best Feature Film. And this is the festival where Black Panther premiered. So I have to yes. jump that in there so people know it's no joke. Afri is the <laughs> biggest film festival in Africa. It's literally the biggest film festival in Africa that takes films from um, all the regions. Mm -hmm. And we won for best feature film, best screenplay, and best actor, the same uh, young man. And we were nominated for best director, audience choice award, and I believe it was best actress. And then this year in Portugal, we also won the war trailer awards for African region. So, you know, our trailer is popping a bit, you know, you can catch it on- Just a little bit. You can catch it. <laughs> You can catch it on YouTube, you know. Um, I guess it groups the imagination. Everyone who's seen the trailer wants to see the film. It's, it's a great marketing tool. So Kofa has done well. It stood for itself. It was such a process to get it done. And I'm just grateful that um, it's paying enough. Um, we're in the process of uh, talking. We're talking with sales we'll be agents right and back. distributors to get it out there. Um, Do you own a growing the audience business? Screen Daniel so Ross's clients get the keys to success when it comes to meeting well. their bottom line. Awesome. Reach your intended well, that is very interesting. Intriguing. I want to see this movie. <laughs> yes, you will. You will. Yes. So what can Ultimate Creative do for you? Click the link in the description for a consultation and let's get started. Back to the show. Okay, well, let's pivot just a little bit and talk about the things that Black women face in the film industry. What has been your experience as far as the level of support um, from your peers and just the, the overall sentiment when maybe directors or other members behind the scene or maybe even actors, you know, see that there is a black woman, you know, at leading this initiative to make this film, not this film, Kofa, but, you know, when they come onto a project and they see um, who else is behind the scenes, has it been a very welcoming experience for you or, you know, has it been a little difficult there? Um, I would say it's a bit of both because um, Canada is a very interesting place. Um, now, and, and, I would say even North America as a whole, it's not until, and I think a lot of us in the industry and so many other spaces that are not even in the film industry um, have realized or were part of the reckoning that happened after George uh, Floyd's passing. And I think that really impacted a lot of different industries when it came to diversity and inclusion and the voice for championing diversity and inclusion. So that trickled into film and it trickled into producing in Canada, at least in our space, in such a way that um, organizations were forced basically um, to start answering those questions. Why isn't there enough support for, you know, for example, in Canada, we do have a lot of stuff money. We have grants that are available. Mm -hmm. It's a bit different than the system in the U.S. And I know sometimes y'all get jealous about that, but <laughs> not all it's going to be. It's not all that it looks like. Okay. However, you know, they started to create these spaces for, you um, people of color and for black people um, start, started to fund, started to create um, funding categories. Now those categories are not necessarily enough money either to produce. You still kind of have the gap because the requirements um, 
ask that you have so and so experience, but it's almost like, you know, chicken before the egg kind of thing, right? You know, well, if you don't give me an opportunity, I would never have the experience to do this stuff. And then if I don't have the experience, then I would never mm -hmm. qualify for those bigger grants or those bigger funding sources or have those investors believe in me to do this. So yeah. it's a lot of scrambling. I and mean, then you find um, people have found themselves in things like web series, you know, focusing on doing proof of concept, focusing on bringing in more senior producers who are always white. Um, and or or other even other uh, um, ethnic groups so other other races uh, so to speak and but that is changing in the sense that all of this money in canada at least have now been poured to you know people of color black there's there's more category and because of the diversity and inclusion riders you find that they're required to have a person of color as part of your production and things like that and sometimes mm -hmm. really it becomes this thing that um that's like a check mark not so much for the skill like it could be for the skill set so it's kind of um it's a double-edged sword right so for somebody like me for instance what i've done so far in canada because kofa was not funded through um, canadian soft money it was uh, self-funded so i raised the funds personally uh, uh the other producers did raise money and got other people on board to raise money so it was uh, completely wow. perfect money so um for my case what i would say i've benefited from are programs that are tailored to black people or people of color that teach you to explore and navigate the Canadian space for producing because sometimes these things are there but you don't even know that they're there and you don't have access to them because you just don't qualify. So for example, like I said yes. earlier, I am a part of the Black Women Film Canada. Um, it's a program that had a producer residency which I've just completed and um, resources, they have certain resources. It's not a lot, but you can see the support. You can see them fighting for us. You can see them bringing in other veterans from the industry to fight for us. There's another thing where even if you meet a senior black uh, producer, they have had to blaze their own trail. And it's not that they don't want to support you or help you, but guess what? They're also fighting for themselves, right? So there's just so many people they can carry along while they're fighting for themselves. And if a few of us don't make it to that top place where decisions are made, where policies mm -hmm. are changed, it's just going to continue to be this vicious cycle where Money is in because people are, I guess, feeling guilty or have come have a reckoning on race after George Floyd and all of the killings that happened in the U.S. and even here in Canada that people don't know about. Um, we don't know if that money is going to keep trickling in. We don't know when it's going to stop. But it's one thing to be putting in money. It's another thing to know that you need to go through tailored programs and education so that you can know what to do with that money, how to how to multiply it, how to grow it, how to use it. Uh, effectively in yes. your production. So that's the, the space I'm in and trying to learn and figure that out because I look at myself as a producer, as a businesswoman. I need to be able to multiply whatever you put in my hands to make a film because I want to make the next one and the next one. And so for me, um, I, I, I'm learning the resources. Some of them are there. It's a battle. It's navigating is talking to the people who are allies they're not black but they're allies and they can tell you try this try that and then you can put some of them on your project because you can get funding from their own spaces where they have access to so um you need a lot of tenacity in this space um, because it is tough not only are you thinking of a creative thing that you love and you want to bring to life but you have to think about the business part how viable is this thing as a business can i make the money back for the investors and not only that can i make enough so that i can make the next one and have yeah. longevity in the industry um, that has been my experience um, obviously when it comes to stories and when it comes to um, roles for people to work in behind the camera in front of the camera we know that they are few and far in between for people of color and black people so part of what you find you know this diversity and inclusion champions doing now is asking for more roles more opportunities for black people to play certain roles as for me and as for my company, Colo Studios, which I started recently, um, my second production company, my goal is to tell African stories, stories that are rooted in Africa. And you cannot do that without the Africans. 
without us that are people of African descent. Exactly. So it inadvertently stands there to create opportunities, to create that machinery for us to benefit from economically. And then for me, learning all these things that I'm learning and mixing and getting into these residences is for me to understand how to manage the business of producing even better from a global perspective as a businesswoman so that I can go in there and be one of the people to close the gaps where we do not have enough people who look like me first be a black person and then even be an African person and then be a woman that's in such roles. Um, because if we're not there sitting at certain tables, our stories may will not get told the way we want them to get told because we're just not going to get the funding for the level of value that we want to produce to. So that's the experience. Um, you know, it's bittersweet. There's some, there's none. You have to figure it out. You have to learn how to keep it. And then you have to get the right people to work with that would, that would uplift your project even more. Yeah, that is definitely a lot to juggle. And, um, you know, there are a lot of components there and forces that you yes. are fighting against and, and um, flowing with as well as you have um, allies and people who really are supportive of what you are trying to do. Right. So kudos to you for fighting the good fight <laughs> and for uh, making it possible for more women and more people of color to um, get into those spaces and not have it as, as hard okay. by the time they get there. Is there anything that you want to leave with our viewers and our listeners um, as they pursue the film industry? Well, well, all I can say is it's, it's, it's volatile. It is tough. And a lot of people tend to focus on the glamorous part. It, they tend to glamorize it. But the glamorous part of it is really such a small percentage. It's like a tip of the iceberg of what happens in the actual industry. And I am still figuring it out. Um, don't focus on that. I know a lot of people, oh, I want to be this, I want to be that. You know, sometimes what you're doing will open a pathway for you where you cannot help but be noticed, be known. You know, you aspire, you want to be like the Oprah's, you know, the Ava DuVernay's, the Shonda Rhimes, you know, those are people that I look up to. Um, but another thing is to really look at it and treat it like a true profession. Now, if you're a producer or you're trying to be a producer like me, um, there are different streams of producing. You have producers who are strictly creative producers, um, producers who are in production producers who do the production, and then there are producers who are business producers. Um, I'm a hybrid between creative and business producers. You have to think about it entrepreneurially. You have to think about it as Again, how do I, what is co commercially viable? How do I tell a story that is not only, again, commercially viable, but is actually a story that will help the narrative, especially within the Black community, within the African community? You have to think of those things. Um, you have a role to play in society. You know, you influence pop culture, whether you like it or you realize it or not. So you have a social responsibility to make sure that what you are putting out there is really and literally something that is of value to the community, something that would uplift the community in some way. And if it's a story that's not necessarily a positive story, what is the end goal? What is the net good that you want to come out of the story? You must look at it from that perspective, or you should look at it from that perspective. It's it's great. You can have a comedy, bubblegum, but let it have substance. There has to be some substance to your storytelling. And another thing is to take time to really develop a story, to flush it out, to give it wings, to do its own thing. And mm -hmm. again, think about it as a, from a business perspective look at what how perry has done in atlanta i know earlier before we we're talking about how you know going out to get a tour i need to come out and visit you know and get yes. inspired by what he's been able to do right and how has he been able to do that from he may be an entrepreneur have other businesses but from a creative perspective if he doesn't have work that is able to create other jobs and other projects it's just a hobby that's right it's the hobby <laughs> and if you're not trying to make it a hobby then you have to look at it seriously be on point get everything and for us you have to be cleaner be on point um you know you don't want to you already have 
forces that are fighting that you need to fight against. You need to come out of the shell of, oh, I'm categorized as a black person. Oh, I'm categorized as a, as a woman. You need to fight those forces. And how do you fight those forces? You need to do things that will make you be taken seriously. Not showing up late, not dragging your feet around and being sloppy, bringing the spirit of excellence on everything that you're doing, researching your topic before you tell it, making sure your pitches are clean and clear, you know, and if you're an actor, showing up for auditions, working with your agent, making it easy for your agents to book you into things, mm -hmm. whatever it is you can do to go the extra mile for yourself. But think of it as you are making a pathway. You are leaving a legacy. Like everyone leaves legacy. It could be positive, negative. Even when you say you leave no net legacy, that mm -hmm. is you're leaving a legacy of vacuum, whether yes. you realize it or not. So think about your social responsibility as a filmmaker who's going to influence people because your job really is to, is society copies you, you copy society. And at the end of the day, everything we do in entertainment, in media, in storytelling shapes society. Whether we realize it, it influences society in such a massive way. So that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you have to think about it that way. Otherwise, you know, you may just be a hobbyist and God knows that I do not want to be a hobbyist. Yes. I want my businesses to be self-sustainable. I want to be able to make more, create more opportunities um, in the world, create more opportunities for people of African descent and people even all across the world who will collaborate with people of African descent. And like I said, the vision for Cola Studios is to center the African experience on the world stage. And that is very massive. And it's something that will just keep us aiming for that North Star and bringing the spirit of black excellence towards getting it done. So that's my perspective. And that's what I can leave with filmmakers it's not easy um there are ups and down times sometimes you really are groveling you know but sometimes you are at the glamorous level and everyone's giving you your flowers and you're excited about it yes. um, but you have to take it all gracefully and graciously and know that the low points will not always stay hopefully if you're doing the right work and you know some people say there's an atom of luck in it but it you know it's not about just being lucky it's about preparing so that when opportunity comes you can seize it oh that is excellent and thank you so much for sharing those gems somebody out there Pleasure. needs to hear that <laughs> and uh <laughs> i know that they are happy that they tuned in this time around thank, thank you so you. much chibi for joining yes. us and, and sharing all of that with us Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank yeah. you all for watching as well and for subscribing if you have. If you have not, please go ahead and do that. And also send us in some topics and some people that you would like to see here on the Ultimate Creative So what Creative can Ultimate Chat. Creative do for you? All right, everyone <laughs> have a great day. Please follow Chibi. Let's see get her started. At the Chibi. <laughs>